everyone uh, thank you for joining in in uh, the first of uh, s several sessions that we are about to hold inshallah on uh, the summary of the Burda Sharif I will go over the summary of each of the verses inshallah ta'ala and uh, I will be reading from uh, the book called the mainstay which is a commentary on the Qasida al Burda this uh, is a translation of Sheikh Ahmad Ibn Ajib Al Hassani, and this book has been translated into English by uh, our uh, brother Sheikh Abdul Aziz Suraka. Beautiful translation of a work, uh, a detailed commentary on the Burda. And uh, first of all, Rabi Al Awal Mubarak to all of you. This is a blessed month for us. For those who uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put even a uh, an iota of love in the heart for the beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam finds it uh, a rahat for the heart, uh, a comfort for the heart. For those who are in difficulty and in pain, the Burda Sharif is always there to ease our pain when we rem remember who the beloved of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Mawlana Muhammadin wa ala ali Sayyidina Mawlana Muhammadin wa barak wa sallim wa sallam alayhi A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Inna Allah wa malaykatahu yusalluna ala nabi Ya ayyu al-lazina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Mawlana Muhammadin wa ala ala Sayyidina Mawlana Muhammadin wa barik wa sallim salli alayhi Mawla ya salli wa sallim daiman abada ala habibika khayri al-khalki kullihimi O Allah, we ask you to send choicest blessings and salam upon our beloved Prophet 
Sayyidina Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam forever and ever and beyond. Ala Habibika, upon the one who is most beloved to you, Ya Allah, khayr al khalki kullihimi. The best of all of creation. So that was a, a quick translation that I've just done of the verses and the chorus that we usually pray in between. Uh, remember that when we are sending salam and salawat upon our beloved Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, we are doing it in response to the ayat in the Quran: "In Allahu malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi." Certainly, the angels send their blessings. And certainly Allah sends His blessings and the angels send their blessings. Yusalluna ala nabi upon our beloved uh, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ya ayyu alladheena amanu, O you who believe, sallu alayhi, send your blessings upon him. Wa sallimu taslima, and send your uh, salam, a beautiful salam and abundant blessing, uh, blessings and salam upon your beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So this is an, a command from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for us in the Qur'an to send blessings upon the Prophet sallallahu May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept these sessions as a response to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to do uh, uh, for our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What you see on the screen uh, at this point is the text of the Burda Sharif. So I'm going to go verse by verse. I mean, uh, the first section, al fasl al awal fi ghazl wa shikwa, shikwa al gharam. So this is a uh, a ghazl, uh, and it is a complaint also uh, about the state, uh, the nostalgic rhapsody. Uh, the state and a love complaint. The Sheikh Ibn Ajiba adhered, uh, Rahmanullah, adhered to the way of the poets of the old by prefacing his ode with a nostalgic rhapsody, also called a nasib. A nasib is where the eulogist, you know, the one who's praising, mentions love and passion and the resultant blame that is incurred as a result. And he speaks about the tears and the sadness and the sleepless sleepless nights and the emaciation that stem from ardent love. The wisdom behind mentioning these things is that they stir the listener and they evoke. And it's interesting why why does one uh, you know this first chapter of the Burda uh, when you read it it seems like it has nothing to do with the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam but it's it's uh, the state that the poet is describing about himself. So, um, here what Ibn Ajiba rahmatullahi says, the wisdom behind mentioning these things is that they stir the listener and they evoke a yearning in the heart for the object of praise. And who is the object of praise? None other but our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then, uh, the Shaykh sets up for himself, now this is a uh, Shaykh we're talking about, um, Sheikh Imam Al Busiri Rahmatullahi, right? Imam Al Busiri Rahmatullahi sets up for himself in the first section an imaginary person, someone who he uh, he like creates out of his imagination, who he addresses and he questions as to the cause of his uh, immense and ardent love and his immense uh, intense passion. This section. The first chapter of the Burda is dedicated to expressing a lyrical yearning and complaining about his love. So the first verse, uh, uh, first couplet, Amin tadakurin jiranin bidi salamin mazaj tadam anjaramin muqlatin bidami Could be translated as uh, how Brother Suraka translated this. Is it from the remembering neighbors of Dhu Salamin. So Dhu Salamin was a place that you shed tears add mixed with blood from your eyes. Or because wind has blown from the direction of Kadima and lightning has flashed in the dark of Edami. So this is uh, 
creating a nostalgic setting, a place that is remembered by the author. Imam Abu Seri, after setting up this imaginary individual for himself, begins to question him about the reason for his sadness and then crying and crying that have become so intense that tears have mixed with blood. Mazajta dam anjara min muqlatin bidami. Right? Tears have been mixed with blood. Is it, he asks, the memory of the neighbors and the loved ones of Dusalam? So Dusalam is what is mentioned. It's, it's the author, uh, Imam Buseri, talking about this imaginary person uh, who is remembering his neighbors. It, and he's asking, is this the reason why you are in the state? And the loved ones that you've left behind in Dusalami, who have left behind, which has caused him to yearn for meeting and for keeping company with them once more. Or is it because of the wind that has blown from their direction? I mean, uh, you know, the winds amongst the Arabs, uh, they they are uh, interesting because there's certain, uh, the way the wind moves and the direction in which the wind comes uh, generally is used to determine what kind of wind this is. Is it a wind that is beneficial for you? Is it a wind that causes illness? Uh, these kind of things the Bedouin Arabs knew very well. But when the wind is coming from your s in the direction of the city, if it's a northerly wind and it's coming from the north, uh, you know, then then it, it is evoking certain memories, right? Or is it because of the wind that has blown from that direction or flashes of lightning that has appeared from the, that region that the author is seeing, uh, this imaginary person is imagining, is seeing in his, his life? So is it... Uh, it's as if the author were asking himself, what is the causes, what is it that causes your pain to be so intense and your tears to flow so profusely, leaving you in such an extreme state of passion and sadness that you have mixed tears with blood? Contrary, contrary to the ma manner of sad people. I mean, this is such an intense love. Uh, and the author is saying that you are doing it you, what you are doing is not normal. This is not the state that one should uh, allow themselves to fall into. Okay, Leaving you in such an extreme state of passion and sadness that you have mixed tears and blood, contrary to the manner of sad people and what is deemed normal among those who weep. Is it because of remembering your neighbors of those enemy and recalling the bygone days spent with them? A remembering which has increased your yearning and intensified your passion and has caused your tears to flow down your cheek mixed with blood? Or is it because of the winds that blow from the direction of your beloved and the flashes of lightning that appear over their homeland, all of which remind you of the nights of intimacy and the days of union and togetherness and the familiar places of your beloved ones? And these, are these the reasons why your longing and your passion has stirred so much, resulting in your tears being mixed with blood? So that's how it begins. Now, you can also place yourself in the situation that when we think of Medina, when we think of our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when uh, we yearn for being with him in Medina, when we yearn for his, his love, for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's love, the feelings and the mixed emotions always take us back to that to places it takes us back to to experiences that we remember from that time perhaps we've had a dream about the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam right so this uh, verse can be uh, you know when you look at that then you can relate to that that we're talking about a beloved we're talking about the beloved of our beloved uh, of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the beloved of the muslims and the mu'min moving on to the next verse we already covered that, uh, which was really about, was it the uh, wind from Dhu um from Kazim, and the mixture of the blood and the tears. So I'm going to move on to, in so, 
uh, Imam Busiri continues with this uh, imaginary person and asks him that question. What ails your eyes that when you tell them stop, they continue to weep still more? And what ails, what is the sickness in your heart that when you bid it awake, when you tell it to, to awake, it wanders away in distraction and gets distracted? What the author then uh, says, Imam uh, Ajib, uh, Ibn Ajiba rahmatullahi describes, he says that this imaginary individual is addressed by the author. What is wrong with your eyes and what ails them and causes them to weep that when you tell them to stop weeping, they do not obey you and they respond to your demand, but instead overcome you and yet more weeping. And what ails your heart? What's wrong with your heart? That when you tell it to arise and waken from its stupors and drunkenness, from its state of uh, 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 not being aware, and turns back to its wayward state, turns back to that state that you are in. When you, when you guide it to what is best, uh, best in its interest, it refuses to obey you and instead turns away and persists in its condition. Such a state can only result from a burdensome longing and love that has completely overtaken the heart and the limbs. So this verse is really again continuing and describing the state of this imaginary person. Ayahsabu sabu, and so let me move on. Ayahsabu sabu an al hubba mun katimun ma bayna mun sajimin minhu wa muttarimi. Does the lovelorn man think that love can be hidden? behind a torrent from his eyes or a heart's raging fire. Does this person described as having such extreme yearning, ardent love, weeping eyes and raging fire in his heart think that he can hide his secret or conceal his condition from others? How can that be? When he is beset with two things, weeping eyes that flow with tears and a heart with a raging fire. Just one of these two is enough to expose him and show the intensity of his love and zeal of his passion, let alone when both are combined within him. So the author links the question to the lovelorn man, this person who is in a state who is lovesick, right? And not just the man in order to elude him to intense love and yearning, had he phrased it instead as, does this man think or does this person think, he would not be able to convey this meaning. So he has to use the term uh, love, lo love lorn, love lorn or love sick person. So, لَوْلَا الْحَوَا لَمْ تُرِقْ دَمْأً عَلَى طَلَلٍ وَلَا أَرِقْتَ لِذِكْرِ الْبَانِ وَالْعَلَمِ but for passion, you would not shed tears at an abandoned camp or lie away at night, at night recalling the fragrant willow or the mountains. Imam Buseri now turns back to the imaginary person and says, as he establishes the proof against him, and details the evidence of his intense love and heartfelt connection. Were it not for your passion and your heartfelt connection and ardent love, you would not weep at the traces of an abandoned camp. Nor would you, nor would your yearning stir upon the mention of the house or the willow fragrance or the mountain. Nor would you weep so that uh, so and be denied the sweetness of sleep. Uh, the mention of standing uh, at the traces of abandoned campsites as is explained by Imam uh, Ibn Ajiba rahimahullah when uh, this recalling the tents and those who dwelled in them the memory of love pacts and other things that stir passion and increase longing uh, these are all well known uh, devices used by poets in Arabic poetry Okay, so because memories of places uh, of the past and then abandon those places that have been abandoned, that no longer exist, that are no longer in there, uh, stir up passion in people. So it's used commonly by po poets. Okay, 
فكيف تنكر حبا بعد ما شهدت به عليك وضول الدم والسقم So how can you deny this love when tears and sickness truthful witnesses have testified to it against you uh, The person is so love sick so much in pain that not only the tears but also with tears there's blood and traces of that have been uh, uh, formed in this person's face again an imaginary person after seeing uh, setting up an imaginary person now imam buseri responds to him in this uh, on the basis that person responds right on the basis of an imagined denial and after showing ample proofs and establishing evidence against him at length the author explains that he is lying and fallacious in his denial So he asks him does a love lorn man whose heart is subdued by passion think that his secret can be hidden uh, and that his love can be concealed even when the proofs of his love are so obvious and plain from the torrent of tears and heart raging with fire to the weeping of the traces of an abandoned camp when seeing it an agitation when remembering that the trysts of intimacy and union with the beloved these signs and proofs have no room for concealment and tears uh, and sickness are sufficient as just and acceptable witnesses as the poet uh, said he tries to conceal it but tears divulge his secrets and his breath discloses his love sickness within uh, okay wa athbatu al wajd khatta yabrati wa dana mithla al bahari ala khaddayka wal anami Love sickness has etched two lines of tears and gauntness upon your cheeks like yellow spice uh, this is uh, bahar uh, in arabic baharat means spices right but uh, bahar is specifically called a yellow spice perhaps it's uh, the ones that we use and red anam is also uh, something that uh, has to do So what the author is doing is now comparing the person's tears and the lines that have been formed and the state of this imaginary person as a result. Here the author says completing what he he was saying before. Uh how can you deny your love when love sickness has etched two lines upon your cheeks? Two lines of tears from which weeping to the extent that they appear like red anam and made you skinny and and thin and gaunt to the extent that your complexion is yellow like bahar. yellow like like uh, uh the spice the yellow spice whereas the two edge lines are likened to anam in their redness you know when the tears are flowing in those lines and they've been flowing so much that they have become uh red and and blood start start coming right so he's comparing the state of this person Okay, again this is arabic poetry so this is all about stirring up emotions before getting into what we are going to talk about in the burda sharif which is about our beloved prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam i'm going to finish at about 9:15 we went a little over but i want to get 30 minutes in this and i apologize for for starting late it's always a challenge setting up this um, between work and and this naam sarataifu man ahwa fa arratani والحب يعترض اللذات بالالم now this person now uh, responds and says yes my beloved apparition came to me and denied me sleep for love always opposes pleasures with pain after uh, he says yes to his uh, to the one who is uh, complaining about him and then explains that the cause and reason for weeping and his resulted sick state and sleeplessness and gauntness and weak state uh, explain explaining what exposed him and laid his condition bare what made him be in this particular state he says my beloved's apparition uh, a vision of his beloved the ghost of his beloved the ruh of his beloved appeared to him or a form appeared to him perhaps in in his imagination or in a dream my beloved's apparition has come to me had come to me at night and i was delighted with our union when suddenly my beloved vanished and i woke up and i found nothing there 
Now, how many of us find ourselves that we have these beautiful dreams and when you have a dream and then you realize that that dream is over and that dream could be the dream of uh, maybe a wali of Allah maybe you have a dream of uh, an angelic dream or you see our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in your dream and then that dream ends suddenly right what happens to that so you, I mean you feel like weeping you feel like uh, all these emotions in your heart that you know would that I be able that dream would never end and continue on forever right so he says my beloved's apparition had come to me at night and I was delighted to our union when suddenly my beloved vanished and I woke up and I found nothing there so I suffered immense grief and I kept thinking about my beloved that is a reason for my weeping and my sleepliness sleeplessness and when my why my life is so disturbed that it has earned me a weakened gaunt body a sallow, a pallid complexion, and tears mixed with blood. Okay. So, أيحسب سن ما بين منسجم منه ومطر لولا الهواء لم ترقد من على تل ولا أرقت لذكري. And then he says, نعم سرا تيف من أهوى فأرقني والحب يعترض اللذات بالألم. Now, after having said that and explained why his state was that, he says, "Ya laimi fil hawa, ya laimi fil hawa al adri ma aziratan minni ilayka walau ansafta lam talumi." Oh, you now he's further explaining his state to the one who is complaining about him, who the imaginary person. He says, "Oh, you who blame me for this chaste love, pardon me." But had you judged fairly, you would not have blamed me. He says, "Oh, you, oh, you who blame me for this for this chaste love, this innocent love, that is against the norm and which entails certain ruin and death, because the state of that person, right? I mean, he's completely weakened. He's he's shedding tears of blood. He's weakened. His heart is." completely uh, in, uh, engrossed in that and uh, forgetting everything that uh, el everything else that is that may be important to the person who is seeing them right we look at this person who may be in a state of depression we look at somebody and, maybe, and we say you know we always complain about what you know why are you in the state what are you doing why are you uh, uh, wasting your life away why are you not doing anything useful okay so could uh, could someone please make sure that you uh, let's uh, make sure that you mute Jazakallah thank you very much it's always nice to hear the sounds of little children so he says, "Oh, you who blame me for this chaste love that is against the norm and which entails certain ruin and de death, pardon me for you have judged uh, f fairly. For had you judged fairly, you would have excused me, and had you known what has come of me, you would have not blamed and rebuked me. It is as if he considers his predicament outside of his control and something that he cannot remove from himself. A person can only be blamed and rebuked for what." is in the power of acquisition to blame someone for something that has not acquired on his own something that someone has not acquired on his own and which is not in his power to control is oppression and unfairness since it is tantamount to being charged with an unbearable burden <clears throat> how can you blame somebody who is in love how can you uh, say what is wrong with you what are you doing right uh, why are you letting yourself go so in such a bad state? Love, there's no control over that. Love comes in your heart. It is placed in your heart. Nobody can say, you know, okay, I'm not going to love this one anymore. Right? So, uh, this particular couplet reflects that. Kindly... Uh, Mute your mics if you. Um, gee. Where? Uh, okay, I need to mute everyone just a second. 
checked. Here? No. Here? It doesn't um Okay, it, it, it's everybody's muted now, so it's okay. We'll just continue on. So now we will move now. Before I go there, uh, about the state, uh, there's a few things related by uh, by our early Salaf, uh, Salaf Salihin, those people who have come uh, before our pious predecessors. And I thought that that was very interesting because we all, we all have heard about Majnoon, Qais and Layla, uh, Layla and Majnoon. One of uh, the Salaf, our early Muslims, our early predecessors, rightly guided predecessors said, I saw Qais al-Majnoon in a dream after his death and asked him, what did Allah do with you? He replied, he forgave me and he made me a proof against the lovers. Um, now it's, it's related that on the day of resurrection, on the day of judgment, on the day of Qiyamah, a divine call will be made asking, where is the madman of Layla? And he should... Uh, and he shall be brought before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with disheveled hair and, and will be covered in dust as if he were a ghoul, a limpid creature. And he'll be the same, the same state that he was in this world, right? Majnoon or Majnu uh, is called in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah will take him to account and then forgive him and say, Where are those who claim to love me? Is there any amongst you whose obedience has reached the level of Taisa's obedience to Layla and whose love has reached his level of love for her? I mean, that is really profound, I think. SubhanAllah. Yani, if uh, this, when, when the stories of Layla and Majnu, Layla and Majnu, and Qais and Layla, are related often it's related in poetry and stories right it's not about a love story between a man and a woman it's not about that passion and and uh, that base desire but the story of Layla and Majnoon is always stands um, to uh, to show us what love really is and what level of love people can go to and what passionate love uh, that that person can have and why are we not doing the same thing for Allah and His Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Okay, so we have to, uh, I, I thought that that was really a beautiful uh, thing that was mentioned by, by the uh, Imam Al-Ajiba who did the commentary in this. Okay, so I, you know, I want to, uh, I think we'll stop here. Yeah, we'll stop here today. Uh, I was hoping to finish the whole chapter, but um, I promise I will stop at 9.15. And I think, uh, you know, once we get the, past this section, because we want to cover the text, we want to cover the uh, entire thing, and if we don't cover it by the 12th of Rabi'ul Awal, we'll try to continue. It's still the month of Rabi'ul Awal, but we'll do a little of this 30 minutes every night. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, forgive us, and guide us and make us among those people who uh, can increase that Allah puts love further in our hearts for our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Let's uh, just read this, recite the burda of the section and we'll make dua and uh, end. Mawlaya salli wa sallam daiman abada على حبيبك خير الخلق كلهم آمن تذكر جيرا بذي سلام ما زجت دم عن جرا من مقلة بدم أن حبت الريح من تلقائي كذمتين وأو ما ضل برق في الظلماء مني ضمين 
فَمَلِعَيْنِكَيْنِ قُلْتَ كَفُّ فَهَمَتَا وَمَلِ قَلْبِكَيْنِ قُلْتَ اسْتَفِقْ يَهِمِي أَيَحْسَبُ صَبْوَانَ الْحُبَّ مُنْكَتِمُونَ ما بين منسجمين منه ومضطرمين لولا الهوى لم تريق دمعا على طلالين ولا عرقت لذيك رلبان والعلمين مولا يصل وسا لم دائما نبدا على حبيبك خير الخلق كلهم فكيف تنكر حبا بعد ما شهدت به عليك عدول الدم والسقم وأثبت الوجد خاطي عبرة وضنا مثل البهار على قديك والعنم نعم سرى طيف من أهوى فأرقني والحب يترض لذات بالألم يا ليم في الهوى عذري معذرة مني إليك ولو أنصفت لم تلمي مولا يصلي وسلم دائما أبدا على حبيبك خير الخلق كلهم اللهم صل على سيدنا مولانا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا مولانا محمد بارك وسلم يا رب العالمين accept our station of the Burda Sharif يا الله يا كريم يا رحمن يا رحيم accept our getting together uh, uh, reciting this reading this accept uh, the text and the work that had, has been uh, prepared by translated by our beloved uh, Sheikh Abdul Abdul Aziz Suraka and also the commentary that was uh, put forward by Sheikh Ibn Ajim al Hasni rahmatullah alayhi. And Ya Allah, we ask you to raise the ranks of Imam al Busiri rahmatullah alayhi. Ya Rabbil Alameen, Ya Allah, Ya Kareem, Ya Allah, we ask you to present this hadiyatan tofatan in the barga of our beloved Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and to all of the family of, of our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and to all of the companions and to all of the sahaba sahabiyat radiyallahu ta'ala majmeen tabi'in 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 rahmatullahi wa ajma'in and to all of the awliya to all of those muslimin muslimat mu'minin mu'minat muslimat salihin salihat all who hold the love of our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in their hearts Ya Rabbil Alameen we ask you to uh, grant them the rewards of us sitting here as a gift from us to them and to our parents and to our families and to our uh, relatives who have left this world Ya Rabbil Alameen until Yawm Al-Qiyamah Inna Allahu Malaikatahu Yisalluna Ala Nabiya Ayyu Al-Ladheena Aamanu Sallu Alayhi Wasallimu Taslima Allahumma Salli Ala Sayyidina Mawlana Muhammadin Wa Ala Sayyidina Mawlana Muhammadin Wa Ala Sallam Ya Qila Ilahi Illa Allah Muhammadu Rasulullah Sallallahu Alayhi Wasallam Assalamu Alaikum Wa Rahmatullahi Wa Barakatuhu